totally stuck. A trio, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May, started presenting a car show. That car show brought things like supercars, comedy, <laughs> reasonably priced cars, destruction. Great news. The Dacia Sandero, crashes, cheap cars, the best driver, vans. Very large. More destruction, 18 wheelers, more crashes, more comedy and football into a new light for thousands of people. Thousands turned into hundreds of thousands. Then, millions. They redefined TV shows. They raised a generation of petrolheads, inspired countless road trips, and made millions laugh with their, uh, for the lack of a better term, explosive <laughs> chemistry. As their journey comes to a close today, let's look back at their story, and why they will forever remain legends at the top of the world of cars, and other stuff. To be honest, Top Gear itself began way before with just Jeremy and some other presenters, but as far as most of us know, it all began in 2002, when he returned to Top Gear with Richard Hammond, a rising presenter, and James May, who would replace Jason Dore and join a season later, they formed a trio that was, unlike anything the world had ever seen. The formula was very simple, cars, challenges, <laughs> starting fires, putting out those fires, a lot of driving, and more importantly, their banter. It wasn't just about car reviews anymore, it was about storytelling, camaraderie. They did have a very unique way of showing that. put it to you this way. And adventure, lots of adventure. In one of their first memorable episodes, they bought old cars for under 100 pounds, tested them in ridiculous ways, and entertained the world with their comedic pranks and dialogue. Top Gear quickly became a global phenomenon. Whether they were driving across the Bolivian jungle in ruined 4x4s, Only land racing to the North Pole with Jeremy in a modified Toyota Hilux, or crossing Africa in 1,500-pound cars, not one of those adventures ended without some sort of engine fluid leakage, or completely seized engines, or, at the very least, body panels missing. These moments amounted to around 50% about cars. The rest were about exploring the world and my colleagues aren't here, which means they must be dead. Leaving each other behind. Arguing. You know, I'm going to get macheted to death. Did warn you. Did I, I, did I not warn you? That things are going well. And maybe, just maybe, some were about driving on all the roads in the world, paved or not, creating unforgettable adventures and memories for the three of them and the viewers alike. The chemistry between the three hosts was seen from the very start. Jeremy's bold, often outrageous personality clashed perfectly with Richard's cheeky, <laughs> excitable nature, which irritated the often calm James. And thus, in almost every single episode, started an argument. You're a clot and you ruined your In cup. spite of all this, they were friends, brothers even. And you could feel that in every episode, though all three of them might disagree on that point Back as well. To the studio. Whether they were blowing up caravans, modifying ridiculous vehicles, or bickering over who could build the worst car, the humour was relentless. The, the winch isn't working. And sometimes reckless. He crashed into me. But always real. We laugh about their destructive nature now, but over the years, the trio faced many dangers. <clears throat> yes. In Series 9, 2006, Hammond was quite nearly dead after an almost 300 miles per hour crash. In Series 22, the infamous incident, I admit, for the wrong reasons, happened in the Patagonia special. The first couple of hits were from X, but then the rock started. Obviously, none of this really amounted to any cracks in their bond, or did it tone down the recklessness. In over 22 seasons, the trio drove some of the world's most incredible cars and raced against each other in trains, buses, and even airplanes. It created many races that stemmed from the aforementioned arguments, like when Jeremy raced a Bugatti Veyron against a jet piloted by rookie pilot James May, an SLR against public transport in a race to Oslo, and James in a XK120 from London to Edinburgh versus Jeremy in a restored 49 Peppercorn train and Hammond on a Vincent Black Shadow motorbike. These episodes inspired many dream cars to form, from Koenigsegg to Pagani to Bugatti to Ferraris to Lamborghinis. The news, the news. was always 99% comedy, body. Oh, I'm sorry, James. Body. comedy, no, and more no. comedy, anyway, last while the rest, actual information about cars. The, Sandero, it's delayed. the reasonably priced cars were a big part of the show, with 
the Liana, the Seti, C apostrophe D, and the Astra Tech line being the stars. Look at that mighty machine. From all of that, we can clearly guess why the viewers were absolutely shocked hearing about the dismissal of Jeremy. That was quite a turn for Top Gear. The other two followed right behind him, leaving the Top Gear studio much less crowded than it used to be for more than a decade. But that wasn't it for them. The Grand Tour kicked off in 2016 with the trio up front. The magic was back. They returned with bigger challenges, more spectacular locations and some of their best moments. They navigated treacherous terrain and constantly struggled to keep their vehicles from falling apart. All with stunning backdrops and more bickering. Clarkson! Their unforgettable trek through Mongolia, where the three were left stranded with nothing but some body panels, a Land Rover engine and some space food, was another one. They had to build the car from scratch. Well, at least the two of them had to, while the other... Yeah. Watching them build the car, which they named John, and make their way through some of the harshest, more beautiful, most remote landscapes on Earth, all while slowly losing their minds, was more entertaining than 99% of movies. During the pandemic, their Scottish slash American special had them traveling through the highlands of Scotland in classic American cars with even more humor. Driving into a ditch and huge supercharges. It was going so well. But there goes Hammond again in a Rimac Concept 1, one of eight, tumbling down a hill and catching fire for five days straight. Thankfully, he was all right, and as always, Jeremy and James responded to their friend's near fatal crash with 14.7. Yes! I am the winner. Now, after 22 short years of thrilling journeys, challenges, epic road trips, arguing, he he's he and he's even more no idea, actually, but don't tell him. Hammond, you idiot! The end of that road is here. On September 13th, 2024, the trio's incredible run came to a close. Well, I think that's it. As they diverge onto other chapters in their lives. Fans who grew up watching these three will feel a bittersweet sadness, and young kids will have to relive those amazing times as memories on a screen as a piece of history. Clarkson, Hammond, and May raised an entire generation of car lovers and, without a doubt, will continue to do so in the future. For many, this will be the end of an era. The three men who made not just cars, but buses, trucks, airplanes, and even vans exciting, funny, and emotional. Strong Chevrolet Corvette. The chicken was still warm, and my dad was still alive. In fact, he died half A driving later. off into the sunset, one last time. Whether it's a teenager who fell in love with cars watching them race across the Sahara, or a longtime fan who laughed along with their antics, their story will live on and on. Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May presented a show. They dropped a car from a roof, blew up a house. They drove, jumped, and burnt caravans, drove supercars, broke supercars, drove hypercars, broke them as well. They tracked reasonably priced cars, broke even more cars, but more importantly, they inspired millions and will inspire more.